and a very happy Thursday to you all. I do hope that you're having an amazing week and that you've had a good day as well. So today is the release of our new mini delight. So always on the 15th, we have a new mini delight for you. So I'm just making sure that we people are popping in and I can see, yep, we are good. So the lovely Kathleen is going to be behind the badge today. Also, if you do share this live stream, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Alta New store. So that would go a good way to get the new Mini Delight if you do find it interesting. So I am going to move you guys down so we can work onto the tabletop and you can see exactly what the new set looks like. So just going to pop you down now and here we are so I'm just going to take these out of the packaging I should have done this beforehand but I am sorry everyone so and there we go so as you know we have a new mini delight on the 15th and this includes a stamp set and also a die set I'm just having a little bit of trouble trying to get that one out so this is the one for this month so you're going to get a stamp set, which is two by three, and also the die set that does match the images that we have in there. So we have some really cute gemstones in here, as well as two tiny sentiments that are going to fit on any space that you have on your card. So let's um, stamp them up first, and then we'll create a couple of little projects with them as well. So I'm just going to grab myself a little bit of scrap paper for the moment just so we can stamp these up and then you can see what they look like so I'm going to go for this little gem piece here and these are layering sets so most of our mini delights are layering I think we only have one maybe two that haven't been layering at the moment but we do try to do layering ones in these so we have the little gem and then we have the another little gem so you can color these using your colors your favorite coloring mediums if you wanted to but you can also use the layers that we have in there as well so if you are out there please let us know what you think about this new little mini delight do you already have yours as well would be nice to know too okay so i just popped the little sentiments on there as well so you can see everything when i stamp it all out so you have time to sparkle and you are a gem so we do have a little guide to how to you know you can pop these together if you want to so we have the layering for this one i'm just gonna Grab some blues and for the outside piece, I'm going to use the darkest. So I'm going to go for Azurite. And I think this is um, Glacier Caves, maybe. I'm just going to pop that in. And then the next piece. And I'm going to go for ultramarine for that one. <clears throat> if you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments. And the lovely Kathleen will then let me know if there are any questions that I need to answer. Because we are live on Facebook and also YouTube, I can't actually see the comments in real time. But the lovely Kathleen is there and she will pop them over if you do have any questions. I'm then going to go with Eastern Sky. To pop these ones in. And for these ones, I'm going to go with the lightest colour as well for the lightest colour. So there is five layers. So you can use four inks or you could actually grab another ink from another set if you wanted to uh, but I'm just gonna go 
with the same Arctic for this one. Oops, wrong one, it's this one here. Iceberg, sorry. Here we go. And then we have a couple of other pieces. So we have this centerpiece here. Again, I'm just going to go with the blues. And then we also have another piece which kind of looks like a cross. And let's go with Eastern Sky first. And as you can see, I'm using my little mini cubes. They're just like the perfect size for these mini stamps, I think. there we go so I didn't quite get all of them in exactly the right position but you can see just how cute those little gems look when they are all stamped up and like I said you don't necessarily have to do them like this you can definitely stamp them and then color them with your watercolors your markers or even your colored pencils so there we go so that's how the whole set looks when you've stamped it up. And let's create a little card, shall we? So I am going to use um, that blue one that we've already done because waste not, want not. But I'm going to create a little flower like it suggests here. So I'm going to have another four of these. Because, you know, I do like my flowers to have five petals or an odd number. Okay. So we have blue. And I was thinking maybe we create a rainbow gem flower, which would be quite cute. So I have my blue already. So I'm going to go for a purple. Um, yes. Let's go with the original shades of purple shall we so we've got the soft lilac lavender fields deep iris and the midnight violet hi there everywhere <laughs> yeah we have to have them um, rainbow somewhere right okay so uh let's go with the soft lilac no 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 i went wrong sorry everyone the the darker shades would be around the outside and it gets lighter towards you okay so I did go a bit long. Normally I start with my lighter shade and that's probably where I'm getting a little confundled. Okay, there we go. I was slightly off again. Never mind. Um, and then this piece. I should maybe do all of them in the same time. Never mind. I believe that is the wrong one, maybe? No, we're good. Pop that one down. Yeah, my other one was really quite far off, so I might need to just go back in with that one. I feel like I've really confused myself somewhere along the way. Okay, maybe I've done the wrong, right, you know what, I'm going to start that one completely because I'm sorry, it shouldn't be this difficult, these are quite easy to put together, so we're going to scrap that one, okay, let's pretend that he's not there, maybe we cut him off, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to do, sorry little gem, but you're not going to be playing today. I reckon I could probably save it if I wasn't live but when you're live you do get a bit flustered when something goes a little bit wrong and I know that we shouldn't because we've been doing this for quite a while now so 
Midnight Violet. Check. Next one. Deep Iris. Check. Okay. Okay, things things are looking better to me now. Oops. Lavender Fields. So, we have lots of different shades of purple. It would be nice to know if anyone has a favorite purple shade. Because I, when I use my purples, I always seem to go for the more dusky hues. Um, and I, <clears throat> I think it's called sugar plums. Because I rarely use purple in my crafting. Apart from if I'm doing a rainbow and then you kind of definitely need to put it in. But if I'm going to use purple, I'll then choose the more dusky shades. But it'd be nice to know which ones your favourites are and which ones you keep reaching for. Because it may, you know, inspire me to grab those instead of the ones that I always grab. So they're my purples. I'm going to need... I'm, instead of doing... Ooh, see? Okay. I'm going to put my lagoon colours to the side because I know that I use them again and again. So I'm going to go for green meadows for my green one. And again, I'm going to work out. So the darkest, so that was the hunter green. Then we have the just green. This one reminds me of kind of like a Kelly green, you know, like a, a proper, like four leaf clover kind of color. Sweet leaf. And you can see now that I have stamped it a couple of times, it's, it's back in my mind. I know where I'm going with it now. I was out of practice before. Yeah, they're starting to look really, really, really good now. I may need to do my blue one again, but we're going to stick with it. Oops. I say that and then I go completely wrong. Sorry, everyone. But all of these little pieces are really easy because you have that outline. But you can stamp this without the outline too, if you wanted to. I would recommend that you maybe use a misty. I mean, we can give it a go without a misty because I'm all one for using my blocks. I am old school block lady. Okay. Let's go for a yellowy orange so then we can miss out <coughs> either the orange or the yellow. So <laughs> my yellowy oranges are the Sunray, Camomile, Snapdragon and Marigold. And then we can have like a coral colour, I think. Instead of a red, we'll go coral. So, has anyone got any good news that they would like to share? I always think that, you know, it's always nice to spread, spread the joy. A little bit of good news, I think, cheers everyone up. So if you do have some, please let me know. So that was the marigold first. Now Snapdragon. And I also, if no, uh, I don't know if anyone let us know if they do have this one and if, if they've played with it already because they were in the subscription. But please let us know if you already do have it and how you like it. That one was the Calamile. And last but not least is the sunray, and then we only have one more of those little gems to do. And then, like I said, I'm going to go with a corally colour. Oops, wherever. <laughs> I inked it up and then forgot that the block was over there. I was like, hmm, 
stamps disappeared. So I'm going to go pink pearl. And I think um, this one, which is called Tea Party with the pink pearl and the coral blisses, is one of my favorite reds. Even though it's not actually a real red, it's more of a coral color. Ooh, it may look, yeah, I think it does look like a jade seal. Looks very pretty. This one's more of a citrine, and we have an amethyst. This one, I'm not quite sure, although we do have our sapphire from before, so if anyone knows what this kind of color gemstone is, please let us know. I don't think it's like morganite. I think it's going to be a bit too dark for that, maybe. So I'm going to go with Coral Bliss. Yes, yeah, always old school with my blocks. Especially for smaller little stamps like this, I find that they're um, easier to control. And sometimes mine stick to my finger, you know, when you're trying to pop them in the correct place, especially if they're tiny. Heartbeat. And then last but not least, we have the Vineyard Berry. There we go. So we have all of our little oops gems done, but for the centerpiece, I'm thinking because it's gonna go like rainbow on the outside, maybe our little flower gem center. Oh, Diana, congratulations. That is such lovely news. Yay, new babies are always so cute. Um, we became, me and my husband, we became like great uncles and great auntie, um, a couple of months ago. That was cute. But I do think that great aunt makes you sound really, really old. I, even older than a nana. I don't know why. Right, so I'm going to go with a grey gem. So I'm going to go with limestone. That in center, and then this one it stamps, and then you twist it, then stamp it again. <laughs> so, oh, I when you, you do rearrange your craft stash, though, I think everyone will admit that you do find things that you haven't used and <coughs> stuff that you. I've hoarded so you won't actually use as well. Maybe that's what's happened with your ribbons. Oh, Carol, you get the Paint a Flower subscription. Oh yeah, I really love those. And the next one is very, very cute too. It's very, very pretty and detailed. I think I only have a couple of wood-backed stamps <coughs> um, because... I kind of um, started stamping bef when it was photopolymer stamps because I was a scrapbooker before. So by the time I got into stamping, they changed to the clear ones. So I've got all my little pieces here for my little rainbow gem flower. And we do have the coordinating die set for this. Even though I think that if you wanted to, you could definitely trim around these because it's a really easy little image to cut out so I'll maybe cut one and trim the rest just so you can see how easy it is pop that on maybe I should do one that's away from the one that I can always add another one on to I'm sorry if I'm going out of the screen a little bit, but I've put it right down so you can see. I keep forgetting how far it goes. Hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, if you do share the screen, you stream even, 
you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the old snoo store, which would go a good way into grabbing this little set if you wanted to. Okay. Flip around. Okay, so I've cut two of them. And I seem to be losing a lot of space on my desk. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim these other ones. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, I do love to do a bit of a rainbow. And gems, you know, they give you that excuse that you can do lots of different colours with them because... There are so many different gemstones out there. And maybe if you wanted to do like a birthstone card, maybe they were born in September, so you could do sapphire. Um, April's a bit boring because, you know, it's diamond. I, when I was little, I always felt a little bit hard done by because I was April. And I was like, ugh, my gemstone's like nothing because it's, clear and and then when you get older you realize actually that one's okay we're good with the diamonds there you go i don't need that piece there oh, sandra yeah i'm i'm 35 and i was yeah great aunt at 35 yeah it, did, it doesn't feel great but you know we have a little baby in the family so that's good okay so i'm thinking that my flower is maybe going to be a bit lost on here i maybe should have done a couple more but what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of create a really um cheat long and skinny so i have my four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm just going to take some off of this. So I'm just going to take my thingy. And I'm going to take this to three inches. So it's five and a half by three. So even though it's, you know, classed as a long and skinny, it's still just quite cute. It's like a little um, placemat. You could do these as place cards, especially for the holidays if you wanted to. Oh, Avril, on and you on you were called Avril, which is, oh, that is really clever. Your parents were really good to you with that one. That's cute. So I have my little images. I need to burnish that down a bit, a little bit more because it just keeps wanting to pop open. Diana, I didn't think about a sparkle pen and I didn't get mine out. Good idea though. So, I have my little gems. Although, I'm going to say this is a garnet even though it's more corally. Okay. So, he's going to go in between. There. Oops. I'm going to stick that in with some foam dots. The lovely Lilith has inspired me to get out my bag of mini foam pads and use them up before I do buy any more. It can be a little bit tricky to get the backs off though. There you go. These are what I found when I um, did my craft space soon. <laughs> <clears throat> Lots of tiny little foam pads that I, you know, I didn't think I'd ever use again, but Lilith has inspired me to reuse them. Oops. Although they do tend to stick together quite a bit. And you find these little backings everywhere. 
I do prefer the <laughs> tape where it's got a bit more of a backing because that can go straight into the bin. These tend to find themselves in a lots of different places. So I have my little gem flower there. I'm going to pop oops, a foam pad on the back. Perfect size. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. So, ee, that looks very cute. So, I'm going to then add a little sentiment on. And we have two in the stamp set. And let's go with You Are a Gem. A great little thank you card I think and you could definitely do more of those little flowers if you were making a larger card but I think if you're just going to do one of them you may need a smaller space for it maybe we could have added a stencil in there to kind of take up more of that space but it's looking very cute <coughs> okay so I'm going to move that up there and I'm going to grab myself some watercolor cardstock. And let's do a little bit of heat embossing onto this. Just make sure that I've got my heat tool on. Oops. Okay. <laughs> if you are an anti static powder or baby powder, you probably don't need to add as much as I did. But I do tend to use it on my hands too. Okay, so I'm going to just take the outline. myself a scrap piece of paper. Just have to lean quite far back for that one. And I'm going to kind of stamp these so they're falling down the page. Okay, so grab my clear embossing ink and I'm going to go for some white embossing powder. I could always go for clear because I'm stamping onto white, but I do find that white kind of holds its color a little bit more especially if you do get a little bit of watercolor going underneath the image so let's get these all kind of falling now I'm trying not to stamp them on top of each other let's do a couple at a time not get too excited I didn't stamp that one particularly well. When I do heat emboss, I tend to start at the back. So when it starts to melt, I can then move it forward. I tend to not get as much fly off that way. Trying to ink these a little bit better than before, so give them a good old squidge. Oh, this would be nice to have gems falling <laughs> from the sky like this. should be good you know you don't want these gems to run out down the bottom there we go Hmm. 
us go for another rainbow, shall we? Yeah. I'm feeling very rainbowish today. It's been a while since I brought my rainbow love. So let's stick with it. We've already done one. We may as well do another. Okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way because otherwise I am going to get very messy. Okay. And I'm going to grab my watercolour pan set. So I've just got my 24. And I want to kind of have it... I was going to do a wash, but I want it more splashy out on the outside. So I'm just going to take my water bottle and I'm just going to add some water to the back. You know me, I like to add water to the back just to kind of straighten that out. And then I'm going to add some water to the front too. Okay, so I haven't got it all over. I want to kind of push the water into those little specks that we have going. So hopefully you can understand what I mean when I get going. Alright, so I'll grab my paintbrush. And I'm going to go for Rubelite. I'm just going to drop that in. Okay. I'm just kind of pushing it and it's going to go more jaggedy around the edges because we've sprayed rather than put a wash down. There's my pink. Orange, I'm going for the warm and cozy. So that's going to be my red from for today. I'm going pinkies. I'm putting a line of colour down and then I'm kind of pushing the colours into each other. And they will blend. Oops. Nearly flicked onto my computer. Not great. Yellow, let's go with a really, really bright one because that orange is quite bold today. This one is the pocket full of sunshine. And we can make those edges more jaggedy in a minute. That yellow down. Mix the colors in a little bit. A green, I might want a bit more yellow down here. Oops. That orange is taking control. And I'm going to go with the rainforest greens. Beautiful, limey colour. Now, I don't want my orange to come next to my green because it's going to give me a nasty. So I'm just going to push that back. Sorry, little orange, but you've been stopped in your tracks. Green. And then last but not least. Hmm. It's supposed to be clicking. Sorry, everyone. If you keep getting a clicking sound, it's the camera. And I want my seashore. Because I didn't do lagoon in my other one. So I'm going to kind of have to have some in this one. Okay. So now, if I use my spray again, it's going to kind of spray out that colour and add some more detail and interest to it. Right, so I'll move this over. I'm kind of angling it so it does add drops. Okay. What I want to do is take some of that colour away. I know it's really nice and bright and bold, but I think we may want this to dry today. So I'm just going to take some of that orange out first because that's the one that's kind of causing the palaver. Oops. There you go. 
Okay, it's not as bold as it was, but it's still quite pretty. A little bit of... I'm just gonna heat set that a little. and taking so much of that colour away it was really pretty and bold but never mind let's not dwell on that I'm going to take a piece of black cardstock I've already got some anti-static powder on there grab my little sentiments again sorry leaning over it's rude So this one we're going to go for the Time to Sparkle. And again, I'm going to use that white embossing powder. Oops. I don't want to get it on that bit because I've just added some water to it. And then we're going to heat set that. Because we've got all them colours up there. I wanted something that's going to contrast with it. So white sentiment on black always works. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to have a nice strip. So grab my little trimmer. Even though it looks huge not that big. The camera's quite low down today. I think we're good there. Oops, I <laughs> got it in water. I'm just going to use my sleeve just to buff that off a little. That's just the talc that was on there, or baby powder. And because I've got this bit here on where I think that that orange went down a little bit too much, I think that's where I would place my sentiment. Once this is nice and dry, it's still quite damp at the minute. So, there are our two cards complete. So we have the watercolour one and also the little gem well made of a tall and skinny card it wasn't completely a tall and skinny card we just kind of trimmed um, a normal card base down to a three and by five and a half so there is that there. I know I should have kept that on there but it's so cute right so I'm gonna move you guys up and then we can say goodnight. So hello there everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We really do hope that you love our little mini delight precious flora as much as we do. And we hope you have so much fun using it. Thank you so much for watching again. And we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye. -bye.